All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. It is about 10 o'clock here. August 11th, 2024. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a... Uh, looks like a little 1.9 into the area of California. We'll get to the rest of this earthquake activity here in a little bit. want to chat about the space weather activity here. Bouncing way up here. We've got uh, almost a G3 class storm coming in here. Uh, in the last couple hours, I was just outside observing the northern sky here from Northern California. I seen this, you know, spectacular aurora event back in May, but that was the KP index of uh, nine or so, a G5 class storm. But uh, right now, fairly intense. If you're out there across the northern tier states, uh, I'm guessing roughly about Central Oregon. You can follow that green line through Nebraska. I've seen some reports of it being down in Tennessee in terms of the auroras out here tonight. And uh, of course, where it's overhead, I'm sure they got a beautiful, spectacular view of colors from this uh, awesome solar storm that's coming in here. And um, it could continue for the night. Things are uh, remaining optimistic out here, right? As far as uh, potentially seeing this aurora activity at various locations out here. So we'll continue to watch that. Overnight, uh, there's the KP index here ramping up again around the 6, almost up to the 7 level here on a couple different uh, models. But what's going on is the BZ component there of the interplanetary magnetic field continues to remain south, pointed or tip south. Um, and it's possible we could see a G3 storm condition brew up here uh, before morning period pending uh, everything holds up. So get out there if you want to see the auroras. Now is the time to do it. I can't fight the mosquitoes and um, I couldn't, I mean, I looked like there was something way up north there on the northern horizon, but nothing like what, it, what had happened back in May. So we'll continue to see that through the night tonight. As uh, far as any major flares go, fairly quiet, but we do have an elevated chance here, about a 30% chance of seeing an X flare. M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance or so. And that's due to, well, a couple different regions here that are, uh, we've got a couple different sunspots facing the Earth. This one over here is fairly dynamic, very large, not quite dead center in terms of facing the Earth, but it will be in the coming days. Uh, also another massive region over here, a little, a little bit of complexity going on. And this area right here shows a little bit of complexity as well. But these sunspots are moving swiftly over there across the western limb and they will be out of sight out of mind here in a couple days so we'll uh, focus on uh, this area right here see what uh, that sunspot becomes that's going to be 3784 a massive sunspot very visible out there all right uh let's see here so well, let's get back into earthquake activity see if anything major is going on out here in the earthquake world starting here in california still seeing some earthquake activity back to back here up around the Ridgecrest area and also the uh, Bakersfield area where they've seen that 5.2 a couple days back now. This is just on the northern edge here of this shear zone. Uh, and that, of course, interchanges with the San Andreas Fault. Nothing big going on here. We did have uh, a couple twos and some threes out here. In fact, the Little Lake area here seen a 3.7 earlier this morning. But uh, for the most part, you know, two separate swarming areas. Got to keep, keep an eye on. And, uh, of course, the San Andreas Fault here. Not a whole lot showing up on that for now. Mainly smaller microquake activity at the um, San Jacinto Fault Zone, which is this fairly lengthy one that stretches off the plate boundary down south here towards the Salton, uh, west of the Salton Sea area. Uh, in Northern California, not a whole lot happening out here, folks. Cascadia Subduction Zone, pretty quiet. Let me... Uh, Bring up the trimmer map here tonight, Cascadia trimmer, and see what we got. Yeah, I checked this earlier, and this hadn't updated yet. So we got about 282 epicenters of trimmer, uh, a little bit underneath Seattle, and also Oregon and Northern California at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So a little bit going on there, not uh, a whole lot, but uh, continuing the trimmer counts up there. The rest of the country out here, fairly quiet. Goodness, what's going on? Not a whole lot of anything. There's that little two-pointer in uh, Virginia earlier this morning. Looking at the broader view of things, of course, way north here 
into the Greenland Sea. We've seen a 5.7 earthquake earlier this evening. Now that could be potentially amplifying things out there across the Iceland area. Let's see what we got here for the latest quakes around Iceland, which uh, has actually dropped down a little bit, looks like. Got about 106 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. I am going to include all magnitudes here so we can see some of these very small microquakes out here, these negative quakes. And uh, as I keep saying, and I'm sure a lot of folks have been staying updated on this, is that the Savart Singhi area is quite swollen in terms of uh, the potential here for the next eruption. And uh, there's a couple different scenarios. We could see it continue up here across the craters area, east of the Slingerfell region, or maybe even further south here around the Grindavik area. We'll have to see how this plays out in the near future. But for now, earthquake activity ramping up across the general area. Alaska area, handful of smaller quakes up there. Really nothing big. Um, goodness, I mean, today looks like it's a little slow out here after days of elevated activity. Not a whole lot going on across the um, Japan area for now. We did have another 4.1 in that area that seen the 7-pointer a couple days ago. So we're still kind of watching that subduction zone. Remember these things kind of pressure builds and then you see earthquake activity. Uh, and then the pressure tends to transfer to other areas across the plate boundaries. And, you know, these sometimes it can take a, a little while for certain areas to pick back up again. But, I mean, it's not a whole lot of large-scale activity here today. General quake movement across various areas. Uh, I guess one noticeable area and uptick is going to be here across the South America region handful of uh, earthquakes deep and shallow adjustment going on here across the Peru Chile trench so that's you know might be an area of interest here with uh, the uptick also a 4.0 coming in right now across the um, they're in the red flag it looks like maybe maybe around uh, the Mexico area here in the middle America trench that uh, is another active region out here Aside from that, folks, um, Mediterranean region, got some movement out around the uh, Crete area, it looks like. Turkey region, 4.2 over there across, uh, let's see where that one's at. That uh, is in Armenia region, 4.2. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some earthquake activity uh, popping off out here across the plate boundary. It looks like it's around the Sea of Crete area on the globe. Mainly smaller microquake activity here in that little cluster going on. All right, uh, hurricane activity. Anything major going on? Nothing going on in the Pacific. Pretty quiet out there. Atlantic Ocean, of course, we got this development here. Potential Tropical Cyclone 5. Now that does have some potential here to become a major hurricane. But notice the uh, direction there. It's well off the eastern coast here uh where these poor folks just got a whole bunch of uh, rain out here recently a lot of flooding uh, across various states due to um the previous hurricane tropical system that went through there this one here though uh got some issues maybe around the puerto rico area as this develops let's see what we got here for the latest model i'm going to put this uh into motion here find a good view we'll go with the north atlantic here this high pressure is a dominant pattern out here that's going to be stirring any tropical systems that develop out here in the atlantic and of course clockwise here the northern hemisphere is going to be the high pressure and as we put this into motion here you'll see that tropical system get caught up over here in the flow uh, around the puerto rico area and stay well off the coast of the states there before, uh, you know, obviously venturing further out and about to the northern Atlantic and the rest of the uh, area here around um, Ireland and whatnot. But I don't see any, uh, any major tropical systems that are headed for the states or the Gulf of Mexico. And that is uh, good news. Definitely good news out there. I want to check out the uh, Eastern Pacific out here as well. I don't like that high pressure, but uh, it's still summertime out here, so just kind of have to deal with it. 
I really don't see anything major going on here across the Pacific. A couple small trop tropical systems that stay south here of Hawaii. Uh, but aside from that, we got uh, a little bit of cool weather coming in here. Uh, I can't really say cold. I mean, if you guys, I mean, for us, below normal a little bit here. We're supposed to be around 94 tomorrow for Monday, start of the work week. And that's just below normal or below average, I should say. And um, I'll take that over anything over 100. We've had nothing but 100 plus degree days here all June and a good good first week of uh, August as well. So I'm done with uh, summer. It'd be nice if it only got up to about 80 or 90. I can deal with that heat, but once it goes in 110, 115, it gets very bad. So there's a little trough developing out here across the West Coast. Notice that cooler temperature in the blue and purple colors indicating some below average temperatures. And uh, I will take it. It's going to last for a little bit. Look at that trough just kind of digging right in there. I like the view of this. Um, so it will last for a few days out here. Uh, and then following that, it looks like things start to heat back up again. So it is what it is, right? I mean, I really can't control this. But if I had it my way, man, 90, 100 degrees would be almost record-breaking if I live somewhere else. That'd be kind of nice. I wouldn't have to deal with this all the time because it gets a little on the... Uh, on my nerves type of uh, event, you know? It's hot, it gets hot. All right, uh, yeah, so a, a few folks did send me uh, some pictures out there, various auroras. Haven't got a chance to put anything together, together yet, but uh, you know, get out there. Things are looking quite promising here in terms of the aurora potential. So a lot of times, even though you can't see it with the naked eye, you can uh, bring your cell phone up. And most of the cell phones these days have the option of uh, doing longer exposure. So probably about three second exposure. If you can do a 10 second exposure, that might be better. And that would bring out any auroras that may not be visible there to the, uh, to the naked eye, but will on your phone and it will look spectacular uh so yeah it does look like oregon here seeing it like i said i uh i went outside here and did a long exposure and i could see a little bit of pink way north of me but that's just from from where i'm at right now i don't have a completely clear view of the northern horizon but it does look like there's a little bit of something so of course the further north you are here to the Aurora Oval line, uh, the, the more likely and more prominent that uh, will be. So there should be some beautiful colors out there. Everything's looking uh, very nice in terms of the Auroras here. So if you got a chance and you love this stuff, get out there tonight and check it out. I am going to call it a night, folks. Seismograph stations out here look about as calm as can be, but hopefully... Uh, I don't jinx it here. Last time I said something like this, we had a bigger quake. So uh, we'll just uh, see how tonight goes. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Monday morning update. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys later. Stay safe out there.